Hey guys, welcome to the MagFed Ranch Paintball channel and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and initial reaction video. But before I get into it guys, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, share and comment. Okay guys, so today I'm super excited because I'm going to be unboxing a Valken M17. Just a bone stock one right out of the box and then just giving you guys my initial thoughts and reaction uh, to, to the product. Okay guys, so... Uh, once again, I'm going to bring the camera in, so I'll show you guys uh, what's in the box and just kind of what my thoughts are. All right, let's do this. So real quick, guys, uh, before I open this up, I uh, just want to let you guys know I got this uh, Valken M17 from my good buddies over at MCS. Uh, I get it. I know I've made some poor reviews on some of their markers, but guys, I'm objective here on this channel. I don't like to sugarcoat anything. I don't like to lie to you guys. Uh, just whatever you know my thoughts what my initial experiences or my even my long-term experience with the product is i'll give it to you guys straight but doesn't mean that i don't support their company i don't support with what they're doing they got some good products out there their accessories uh, some of their modification accessories that you can get i still get from them and then their prices and of course their customer service you know i ordered this they shipped it out right away i got it in a few days uh, really good customer service over those guys over at MCS. Okay, so anyways, yeah, let's begin. So let's talk about the box real quick, guys. Unlike the First Strike T15 box, this is a very generic box. I mean, uh, I've ordered M17s in the past, guys, and just letting you know that this box is kind of the standard box that the M17 comes in. It has uh, obviously a kind of a plastic carry handle here. So, you know, it, it, it's not just your everyday just generic box but for the most part it's literally just a packaging box guys so nothing fancy about it no markings nothing to tell you that there's a Valken M17 in here or you know it's made by Valken or anything like that so obviously the cost of the marker guys is right around $300 320 uh, sometimes I've seen it as low as 320 uh, online so that's kind of what you're getting with right with the price so, you know, the packaging isn't going to be the best. All right, let's 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 flip this bad boy up. All right, so we got a little just small cardboard cover here. We got some good bubble wrapping to protect um, the marker. So this is kind of cool. I mean, it's not very thick bubble wrapping, guys, but of course, at least it's a little bit of padding. Uh, for example, the T15 didn't have any bubble packing in it. Uh, granted, it had a bunch of cardboard. Uh, in there to kind of protect it, but nothing, uh, nothing much. Uh, as you guys can see, it comes with a manual. I always suggest you guys just to read all your manuals. You know, uh, if you're going to learn a lot more about your marker, especially MagFed markers. They're not as simple as hopper markers, especially some of just your basic hopper markers out of the box. So get to learn your MagFed marker, read it, know how to play with it, know how to set it, know how to adjust the, the, the you know, the velocity, uh, all those other little small things that, that might not come with your standard Harper marker, okay guys? So yeah, definitely check that out. We have a bag uh, with a barrel plug, a uh, extra oil, which is kind of nice. It gives you a set of oil to lubricate the marker and some basic O-rings and the tools to disassemble your marker uh, with the Allen bolts there, okay guys? So, comes with that, which is good. I will be honest with you guys, I, I rarely have ever had to uh, change the O-rings out on the M17s, at least mine, but it's good to have. I do oil it a uh, little bit here and there, just like the T15, usually, you know, after a clean. Uh, it's like cleaning any firearm, guys. You guys wanna re-oil it just, just slightly. Uh, let's start with the magazine. So it comes with one uh, 19 round FSR ready uh, magazine, guys. You guys know I speak highly of this magazine. There is a small modification that you could do if you like, and it's it has to do with collar, guys. So go check out that video where I tell you guys how to make this thing pretty much 100% reliable. But for the most part, it's 99% reliable out of the box with first strike rounds, guys. Really solidly built, really uh, functionally well uh, put together magazine. Uh, they have like these little Velcro slots 
and strips that they use to hold all the the items in the box in place guys so that's kind of a nice touch so that way they're not shifting around and potentially scratching the items inside the box um, unlike the t15 though it only comes with one magazine guys so just take into account that that's also probably why the price of the marker is a little bit less uh, these magazines can get up to you know thirty dollars a magazine so you know um, out of the box yes you can play with this marker yes uh, you know, uh, you can go test it, tune it, but really you probably want at least, at least to get another three magazines, guys. So just take into account if you buy an extra three magazines to have a standard loadout of four magazines, uh, you're looking at about another $100 added to the $320 cost of the marker. Okay, guys, bam. Uh, next on the list is going to be the buttstock. And what I do like about the buttstock of the M17 out of the box, guys, is that it, it uses a guide rail system, a guide rod, like kind of like the older T15 models do. I, I prefer this method, guys, over the buttstock sticker, like what the newer T15s come with. Um, yes, they can be a pain in the ass if they come loose, if you don't lock tight or thread paste the rod in place, but once you do that guys really um there's really no reason to take it off right but unlike the t15 with the sticker on the butt uh, on the tank you're not married to that tank with that marker anymore right so if needed i could take the tank off of this marker and use it on another marker whereas the t15 with the sticker it's pretty much married to that butt stock right now I will say that that unfortunately that this guide rod that the M17 comes with it only works with their buttstock guys. So just just to be FYI, unfortunately it does not work um, with uh, the uh, the 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 you know the other style buttstocks that you can get from MCS or or maybe some of the other uh, companies, even the first strike one. Um, if you guys will notice, uh, with my uh, other M17 builds, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but these are different guide rods. You'll notice that this one, it's just a little different shape. This is the guide rod that I got from M, you know, from uh, MCS uh, versus, or you know, just even from First Strike, you can use as well too. It's not the one that comes originally with the M17. So just be aware of that, guys. If you guys plan to use a different buttstock, you can't use that guide rod. Um, they have the barrel inside here, guys. It's a short barrel. Uh, I'll shoot another video where I tell you guys, you know, what the differences are from the factory barrel versus the aftermarket barrels I prefer. But as you guys can see, it's a really short barrel. I guess it's about six or seven inches. You know, so not a very long barrel, guys, from the factory, right? But it, it comes packaged inside the buttstock like that. Uh, let's talk about the buttstock real quick. Uh, the buttstock's just kind of your standard fire. I love it. It's kind of just kind of like your standard soft mod, you know, AR style buttstock. So definitely can use it if you like. If you're not trying to be clone correct, like with some of our markers, but very nice buttstock. And of course, it'll accept the. 13 CI, 10 CI tanks, okay guys? All right, uh, let's look at the iron sights next. So it does come with a set of iron sights here, guys. So that's kind of nice. And I can tell already that unlike the T15, uh, where they were just fixed, non-flip-up style uh, sights, uh, the M17 definitely comes with some better iron sights, guys. Now. I get it, it's just for looks, uh, but it's great for obviously target practicing or zeroing in your marker uh, out of the box with the iron sights, but honestly not very useful when you go play because of the goggles. But as you guys can see that these iron sights are well built and they have elevation and windage adjustments uh, available with them, okay? Um, they obviously just attach to the rail here, the Picatinny rail right with just a little allen key 
and so they just slide in and out here like this right uh, once you adjust the allen key on the side uh, the front sight typically guys is just kind of your right your v-shape u-shape with just the elevation adjustment <coughs> whereas the rear sight will have both uh, windage and elevation typically <coughs> now real quick it looks like the rear sight on this one uh, from the M17 factory size guys is just available for windage. It does not have elevation adjustments in the rear, but it does have elevation adjustments for the front. So that should help you guys zero in uh, the marker uh, using these sights. Okay, so yeah, pretty nice sights from the factory. Uh, not bad, definitely better than the T15. All right, so let's get into the marker last, guys. Right, leave the, leave the best for last, but as you guys can see here, it comes with the heat core system, as every M17 marker does. Uh, comes with your standard A2, uh, you know, uh, hand grip, uh, grip assembly. I really like the selector switch on the M17, guys, compared to the T15. Uh, it is ambidextrous as well, too. You'll notice here that it has both levers on both sides. And you'll just notice here, I'll be quiet here for a second, but you'll notice how positive the adjustment is. Right, so there's a forcible, like you have to like intentionally switch it to each position. And so it's not like the T15 where it's a little mushy or it's a little bit, sometimes you can accidentally, uh, you know, so switch the selector switch. And then if there's an audible click in each position, like I said, which is really nice. Very, very mimics the, you know, the real AR15 mil spec uh, selector switch guys. And as you notice here as well too, it does have the FA position and the M17, unlike the T15, I think this is a steal, right? A bargain, right? Because the, on the T15, the FA capability, the full auto capability is an extra $250. The M17 comes with it already, guys, from the factory, right? Now, would I suggest using it in actual gameplay? No, I think obviously it's gonna waste a lot of rounds and of course it's gonna waste a lot of air unnecessarily, but you know, in a pinch, if you had to use it to eliminate somebody, if you had to use it to obviously break contact uh, and do peeling drills or just kind of let you know make sure you have enough suppressive you lay down suppressive fire uh, for your teammates it's available okay so that's one thing definitely you know the 320 dollar cost of the m17 already comes with that so that i think is really cool now one thing they did change with the m17 from valken uh compared to the mil sig that i didn't like is that they no longer have the bolt release handle here, guys, or the BRH as they call it on their options. So you'll notice that there's no charging handle here. Now, the reason for that, guys, is obviously on the M17, the charging handle is just as, is for aesthetic purpose. It doesn't actually have a function of uh, charging the bolt um, uh, back and forth. Now, however, uh, in certain cases, if the heat core system did jam, this feature would have been nice to reset the bolt to potentially clear the jam uh, if the bolt got jammed up uh, in the front here for whatever reason, like debris, paint, whatever, right? So they do sell this option separately. It's not that expensive, but I think it's like 25 bucks, somewhere around there. But it's just kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think they should have included it. Not only would have it added the realism, you know, added the realism to the market, right guys? you guys can see here on our 417 assaulter clone right it'll add the realism to it but it'll also allow you in that worst case scenario to reset the bolt if there was a jam also i think it's really cool because it has the look of the gas buster the pri gas buster charging handle uh, on the real ar so you know uh really cool clone clone look okay Uh, instead, it just comes with a little plug here, as you guys can see. So, yeah, wish they included that. Um, it, they do have a, a little 
ring here, guys. A little kind of just a snap ring, key, key ring. Uh, it's obviously not the most aesthetically pleasing look, uh, but you can definitely attach your sling point here. This is usually where I'll use, uh, attach my sling point if I'm playing. Or of course, I'll attach it on the buttstock uh, as well. Uh, that's another point you can use. Uh, and then of course, uh, the other sling point attachment can be used on the Picatinny handguard options uh, that are available. But yeah, uh, it, they do include this ring here for that reason, okay guys? Uh, as we know, as I said before, one of the things I don't like about the M17 guys, so check out that top five video. Um, I don't like the fact that to disassemble the marker, you know, you have to do, you know, take apart all these Allen bolts. Uh, I, I wish that Valken will, I guess, continue developing the M17 platform, guys. Um, I, as I've stated before, this patterns after an AR-10 uh, uh, platform. And so it's kind of like obviously a bigger AR receiver style. So why not, you know, have an AR-10 type of receiver, right? Where there's two pins in the front and back like your T15 and you're able to swing open the upper and lower receivers and service the marker that way. The heat core would still be able to work inside um, the the marker guys. Um, the, uh, the heat core for example here, it literally just comes out with these two pins. I'll show you that to you guys in another video but one thing I love about the heat core is that it's super reliable not many O-rings to even replace. I've, I've yet to replace any on any of my markers. It can be finicky with its air issues, uh, but guys, go check out that video where I show you guys how to adjust uh, the pressure relief valve and the velocity. But but yeah, I mean, once you slide, take those two pins off, this thing literally slides out and the whole heat core assembly comes out. Very easy to service. So if they could have just changed the upper and lower receiver, uh, to more of like an AR-10, AR-15 breakdown, that would be would be awesome in the future. So yeah, Valken, if you're listening, if you guys can do that, I noticed a lot of your recent videos, Valken, you guys are kind of moving towards more airsoft products. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys will use that experience or I guess knowledge to kind of put some of that features into your um, your paintball products, okay guys, because I think that added realism would really help enhance our paintball products, okay guys? Um, we talked about the powder release in other video guys. Super reliable, uh, right? Right, a little stiff, unlike uh, like a T15. Definitely the, the release is a little bit more smooth on the T15 markers, but definitely durable and definitely usable. You can, you know, like I said, this thing is a very rugged M17 body, M17 magazines, just the whole features of it is very rugged, but um, I would have preferred more of an AR style release, magazine release, instead of the powder release for more realism, uh, kind of like their new uh, CQ uh, platform uh, marker where they have the mag release here, guys. So yeah, hopefully Valken can look into that and kind of just make the marker, continue developing the marker for more realism looks and features. Speaking of that, uh, I'm gonna touch on another thing uh, which comes to the handguard, guys. So you'll notice that there's three screws here, three bolts here with kind of like this um, metal retaining kind of clip and that is on both sides of the marker, guys. And that's how the M17, unfortunately, attaches the handguard. And so if you need to, you know, switch different handguards, if you want to, uh, you have to come up with an adapter. You have to purchase the adapter that will allow you to use, you know, uh, normal AR style handguards to the marker, guys. So definitely one thing I don't like about the M17 either. I wish they would just come up with a, you know, a more one-to-one -one realistic AR-10, AR-15 style handguard attachment system. So that way we could actually use 
the different AR handguards right out of the box instead of having to use the adapter and trying to get it to fit correct and you know and line it up and stuff like that so but uh, you know with the factory handguard it's solid as you guys can see here it's not moving um, the handguard that comes with the stock M17 guys is really short because uh, as we touched on earlier uh, the barrel that they provide is a really short barrel uh, it's just an a5 threaded barrel and I know one of you guys asked out there if the the freak barrel uh, would work and yeah it definitely would um, it's literally just as long as this portion of the thread here where you have to thread it into the receiver of the M17 as long as the freak barrel doesn't isn't different from this portion on you'll be fine if it's bigger here anything like that it's still gonna work as you guys will see here it's it's, it's still gonna slide into the handguard Here. Now, I will say one thing. Um, if the freak barrel, unfortunately, is a little bit bigger on the body of the barrel, uh, it won't fit through this hole. So will it thread into the receiver? Yes. But if it's bigger, bigger right here, right? If it's, if it's a bigger diameter, then unfortunately, as you guys can see here, it's, it's kind of a perfect fit in that front hole of the uh, of the M17 factory handguard. But that being said, you could always, uh, you know, bore out, uh, shave out, grind out this hole. It's, there's nothing that says that you can't do that as long as you, you know, you're you're careful and you make it, you know, make it uh, nice. Uh, then you can fit the bigger barrel in here. Okay, guys. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Uh, going back, you guys know, the, um, I hate this feature, but it does have it here with M17, it's the hopper adapter. So they just have a little cover here that wants removed with this Allen bolt. You can use the hopper adapter option if you guys, for whatever reason, decide to do that. Uh, the cool thing about the M17, unlike the T15, is they didn't have to do really anything else to make this work besides just cutting a hole and putting this cover piece on. So at least the barrel still just threads in and it doesn't compromise like, you know, the attachment of the handguard or the attachment of the receiver in any way, uh, which makes the barrel, you know, thread in easily and, you know, not have any wobble from the factory. Unlike the T15 that you kind of need to make the adjustments uh, to so the barrel does not wobble. Okay. Uh, the barrel is just smooth bore, guys. Uh, I'll show you another video once again, like I was telling you guys, uh, showing you guys the, the barrel and maybe uh, some of the other factory pieces from the M17. But, but yeah, guys, that's my initial review and unboxing of the M17. I love this marker. Uh, you know, for me, it's right up there with the T15. Those two markers, I really can't choose a winner, but. M17, super accurate with a first strike once you modify it correctly. Um, reliable, maybe not the most consistent uh, with its air quirks, uh, but great marker, great build, great price. Um, if I had to say, you know, what marker I would recommend for a beginner to get into MagFed, this would be one of them. So guys, if you guys like that video, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. Check you guys next time. Peace.